Hello, welcome to the lecture number 19 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. As usual, we will have a quick recap of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I was talking about Einstein's coefficients. Okay. These are just given by if there are two states 1 and 2. So, the rate of absorption in the presence of a photon H nu or rate of spontaneous em uh, stimulated emission H nu and spontaneous emission in the absence of H nu ok. We have rates. So, let us call it rate W 1 2. So, going from state 1 to state 2 that is absorption this corresponds to absorption will depend on the number of molecules in the state 1 and the radiation density at the frequency nu and this frequency is same as the H nu. This frequency and this frequency are same okay. and the proportionality constant is called B12. Okay. That is the Einstein's coefficient for absorption. Similarly, W21 that is emission. Now, emission will consist of both spontaneous emission and the stipulated emission. So, this will be equal to n to the population radiation density radiation nu and this will correspond to the stimulated emission. Plus into spontaneous emission does not need the radiation. So, it does not need or it is in it happens in the absence of H nu therefore, it does not need H uh, uh, rho, radi uh, rho radiation. So, this is for the spontaneous emission. And the proportionality constants are B21 and A21. Okay. Now, under equilibrium condition the rate of forward reaction we know if you have if a and b are in equilibrium so the rate of forward reaction must be equal to rate of backward reaction so rate forward must be equal to rate backward so that means w12 must be equal to w21 Okay. In such scenario, so the B12 N1 rho radiation at nu must be equal to B21 N2 rho radiation nu plus A21 N2. I okay. can rearrange this equation as rho radiation nu equals to A21 N2 divided by B12 N1 minus B21 N2 which can further be can as A21 divided by B12 N1 by N2 minus B21. Okay. Now, we know that n1 by n2 that is the population of the ground state with respect to excited state in Boltzmann is equal to exponential 
डेल्टा ई बाई के टी और एक्सपोनेंशियल एच न्यू बाई के टी वेर डेल्टा ई इज इक्वल टू ई वन सॉरी ई टू माइनस ई वन ओके सो दिस इज नथिंग बट फ्रॉम योर बोल्समैन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन Now, when I plug in this, so this should be equal to a two one divided by n one by n two. I'll use this equation. So b one two, okay, e to the power of h nu by k t minus b two one rho radiation. Okay. Now, if I go back. Little bit ahead and look at the transitions. Okay, transition probability. Then I had one term. So you are um, P F of t was equal to some constants. I don't. You can go and look it up. Okay, multiplied by what you had is delta nu F I plus nu. Oh, sorry, omega F I plus omega my plus omega F I minus omega square. And f uh, epsilon dot mu i square. So this we know is transition moment integral. Okay, and there were some constants. Okay, and there was this term which is the delta function. Now we see we said that the omega f i plus omega delta. And delta omega f i minus omega cannot be simultaneously correct. Okay, so you cannot fulfill these two conditions simultaneously because in this case omega should be equal to minus omega f i, and in this case omega must be equal to omega f i. So simultaneously this cannot be right. So we said this one will correspond to absorption, and this one will correspond to Stimulated emission. So a molecule can either go absorption or stimulated emission at a given point of time. Okay, in general, it can it can happen. Both things can happen, but at a given instance, only one of the process will either it will go from uh, the ground state to excited state or come back from the excited state to ground state. It cannot happen simultaneously. So for absorption process, we only took this one. So for the stimulated emission process, it's so if you look at the equation, okay. If you now look at the stimulated emission, everything else will remain the same, except that this delta function will change. Okay. So if only the delta function is changing, that will depend whether the we are going up or coming down. Okay. So there is no reason for B12 oh, and B21 to be different. Therefore, B one two must be equal to B two one because essentially all the other integrals and the constants are exactly the same. It's just the delta function that is going to be changing. So, if the probability is going to be same, then the rate and the rate constant must be the same. So, B two one must be equal to B one two. Now, if I go back and look at this equation. Okay, and now I plug in rho radiation nu is equal to a two one divided by b one two n one by n two minus b two one. This was equal to a two one by b one two. e to the power of h nu by k t minus b 21 but i said b 21 is equal to b 2 so this is equal to i'll call it as b similarly a 21 i'll just call it as a because spontaneous emission will only happen from the upper state to the lower state and it cannot happen from the lower state to the upper state so essentially what you have is okay 
rho radiation nu equals to A divided by B into e to the power of h nu by k t minus 1, where A is equal to A21 and B is equal to B12 is equal to B21 under that approximation. Okay? So, if you have this, then you have this. Okay. Now, according to Planck's black body, black body radiation theory, rho radiation nu is given by 8 pi h nu cube by c cube okay, into 1 over e to the power of h nu by k t minus 1. Now, in all this case of course, k is Boltzmann constants. Now, both these equations give new re, uh, rho radiation nu. Okay. So, one can equate both of them. So, it turns out that A by B is equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube. Now, we know 8 pi h and c, they are all constants. So, one can write it as 8 pi h by c cube into nu cube. So, A by B is proportional to nu cube because you know these are constants. So, what is A? It is the rate constant for spontaneous emission and what is B? It is the rate constant for stimulated emission. So, the ratio of rate constants Actually, because both uh, rate constants, uh, uh, both the A and B, the rate constants for the stimulated emission and the rate constant for the spontaneous emission we will act only on the population of the excited state. So, not only rate constants, but rates as well. Okay? So, ratio of the rate constants or rates of spontaneous emission to stimulated emission is proportional to nu cube. That means nu is nothing but nu if you multiply it by h, it is the energy. So, if you have two states 1 and 2 and this is delta E, this is equal to E1, E2 minus E1, this is equal to H nu. As you keep increasing the energy difference between states 1 and 2, the spontaneous emission becomes more and more probable because the rate constant will increase, keep increasing with nu. So, if you keep increasing the value of nu, okay, the spontaneous emission becomes more and more probable. Okay. So, which simply means that as the energy difference between ground and excited state increases. the spontaneous emission becomes more probable and it scales as energy cube. Okay? So, 
a by b as you know is equal to 8 pi h by c cube to okay. So, this is an important, but this is only the ratio okay, but we really we, we only know what is the ratio of a to b. but we have to get the value of each. See for example, if I say ratio is 2, then I can have if ratio of a to b is 2, then I can say that you know a can be 10 and b can be 5 okay? or a can be 2 and b can be 1. So, the, you know the ratio, but you do not know the absolute values. Okay? So, we still have to find out the values. Okay. For this we will return to one of our older derivation that is the Fermi's golden rule. Okay. So, let us now look at the Fermi's golden rule. The Fermi's golden rule is given by w that is rate f i is equal to 2 pi h bar modulus of mu square okay, rho f e. Okay. And this we call it as transition, uh, transition dipole. And this is the uh, rho fi is nothing but density of states around f. Okay? Now, where modulus of mu square was given by e naught square by 4 h bar square into f mu dot epsilon i whole square which can also be written as 1 over 4 h bar square. If I take e naught square into and multiplied by epsilon that, that becomes you know electric field. So, modulus of f e dot mu i square where e is equal to e naught okay so this is your modulus mu square that is my rate but in the einstein coefficients we are using rate between states 1 and 2 so i'm going to rewrite this equation slightly differently w21 equals to 2 pi h bar i'll call it as mu 21 square rho 2 of e Okay. So, this will be and where modulus mu 2 1 square equals to 1 by 4 h bar square 2 e dot mu i 1 whole square. Okay. Now, if that is the case, now let us look at slightly in a different way. Now let us assume that my molecule or an a or the transition dipole is along the x z axis. So let us just imagine there is a molecule A B okay, and is aligned along z axis. Okay. So the dipole moment effectively will be along the z axis. Okay. So if if the molecule is aligned along the z axis okay or the dipole moment of ab molecule 
is along z axis now your mod mu square will now then become mod mu z square because the dipole moment is along z axis so this will be equal to okay 1 by 4h bar square modulus of sorry integral of 2 okay now mu z dot e 1 square because the essentially all the molecule is along the z axis so you know only that 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 projection of the dipole moment or the dipole moment along z axis will get projected onto the electric factor e okay now if that is the case in such scenario and when we take isotropic light now what is isotropic light isotropic light means light that is spreading in all directions x y z okay so let us suppose you know you have a lamp or a candle in the middle of the room okay then what will happen the light will go in all sorts of directions x y and z okay so the projection along the z axis will only be one third of the total light okay in such scenario if you use isotropic light then you get there is a coefficient one third so your mu square will now be replaced by one third of mu z square okay because there are two things that are happening first is the light is along the uh, all the directions and the second is the dipole moment of the molecule is, is only along the z direction okay so basically you are wasting the one you know base, basically you are wasting the two thirds of the light that is along x and y projections and you are only utilizing the light that is along the z direction okay therefore if i use all this then by mu z square will be now 1 12th of h bar square to mu z dot e whole square where this will correspond to isotropic light. So what am I doing now? I am using isotropic light to interact with molecules that are aligned along the z axis. Okay? So essentially this tells us that the isotropic light is interacting with molecules whose dipole moment is along z axis. Okay. So, in such scenario, your W12 will be equal to what was this 2 pi h bar modulus mu, mu square rho 2. So, that was our equation. Okay. So, in such scenario, what we will have is 2 pi h bar into 1 over 12 h bar square 2 mu z dot e 1 whole square rho 2. So, this will be nothing but, so this h bar and that h bar, so rearranging what you will get is pi by 6 h bar to mu z 1 square rho 2 okay so this is your rate 
Okay. So, now we know this is nothing but transition dipole with mu z interacting with isotropic light. And this is density of states. Okay. We will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.